I mean, high flow versus CPAP. I mean, uh, we also had a question about biphasic CPAP and uh, non-invasive ventilation. So there's not a big difference between them, but there is a difference. Remember that the uh, biphasic CPAP is usually on a flow driver pattern. And the flow driver is based on flow, as the name suggests. So the higher the pressure you need, the higher the flow. So if you go to the BiPAP or the DOPAP, you may have to keep a flow of 10 to 12 liters even to reach a pressure of 12 to 15. And when that much flow is going through the gut of the baby, the chances of CPAP belly is more. Uh, it's not going through just the airway, it's also going. And the stiffer the disease, the stiffer the lung, the more will go into the stomach because the lung is less distensible. So uh, this is one difference and the pressure maximum that you can reach is 12 to 15. Uh, the item you cannot adjust as much, the rate you can't adjust as much. But in uh, NIPPV, you can do it almost like you do normal ventilation, I mean conventional ventilation. You you have option to synchronize like the SLE guy was saying, that will be by the proximal sensor. They don't have a flow sensor. The microprocessor speed will be uh, different. The uh, uh, capsule on the stomach also has a lag period. So when the information has to go to the ventilator, this is a trigger lag. And the circuit lag will depend on what kind of trigger you're using. If it's a flow sensor and the flow is the trigger, it's a quick response. If the pressure difference at the proximal uh, end of the ventilator is used, it will take a longer time to travel and the ventilator has to interpret. And between high flow and CPAP, again, we have an acceptable, obviously in pediatrics, we go to 15 liters or even more. How many of you do a PACU kind of setup, the uh, bunculitis in... So you all manage such babies. So you can go to higher flows. And uh, obviously, uh, uh, in newborn, some people, uh, I mean, uh, you can call it off license. High flow is one of the treatments that sneaked into neonatology. So no one did really any big research. Some people started reporting it as useful and without much evidence, it started coming into the creeping in, they call it. So the practice creep started happening and then they started doing studies. The studies are only there five, six years now. So the initial studies were very limited and they uh, started using it because of the ease of the use. And now after many years of high flow and when it is actually having evidence base, we are using CPAP also like we do high flow with the same uh, ease of use. The same reason high flow crept in, CPAP also has taken that advantage now. So it's... Um, if you use within the eight liters flow that we keep as upper limit for term babies and six liters flow that we keep as upper limit for babies below 1.5 kilos, high flow is definitely inferior to CPAP. And uh, when we have a progressive lung disease, when you need to recruit the lung, that pressure is not enough to recruit the lung. So we can say that if the baby has a progressive lung disease, we use CPAP or NAPPV. PCCMV is the name for NAPPV on Drager, as we discussed in the morning, is SAPPV uh, instead of AC. So similarly, Drager, uh, the German manufacturer, they keep different names. And sometimes some ventilator manufacturers, we have discussed this before also. I don't know if anyone uses Mackay or uh, Hamilton ventilators here. So Mackay, unfortunately, the PIP terminology can be confusing because you have to add the PEEP to it. So if you say I'm setting 15, it actually means 20 or 21. So that kind of ventilator uh, jugad is difficult for us. I mean, if you are discussing in a group, for example, and you are just putting with your habit that my PIP is 15 and the baby is on 60% oxygen, we will think why you are giving only 15 when the baby is on high oxygen. But actually it means that it's 15 plus 6. So you should clarify that. The common nomenclature is slightly different. And of course... Uh, he mentioned that Professor Ramnathan and Vinit Bandari both are pioneers in uh, NIPPV use. Most of us have used and definitely it's more beneficial compared to uh, plain CPAP in the extreme low birth weight babies. Babies below 1 kilo, we leave them on NIPPV for some time once they're extubated. So we will discuss high frequency tomorrow as well. In the extreme premature babies, high frequency is a good mode. We don't have high frequency jet ventilators in India. In US or Canada, for example, you'll see studies saying they put the extreme premature babies on high frequency jet ventilation. We don't have that here, but uh, again, NAPPV at extubation for the tiny babies makes sense. So consider NAPPV. Uh, most of us have RAM cannula now. Most of us have uh, the modern ventilators which have the NAV. So SLE 6000, 
most of the accenture the uh, acutronic ventilators fabian uh, dragger everything can give the uh, non invasive modes now so if you have a ventilator and you have the ram cannula you can use uh, nappv so there is nothing that prevents you and you don't need to be scared because it's essentially a better form of non invasive ventilation the principles are the same your monitoring is the same you would need to be telling the nurses to watch more closely so that you don't have side effects so what would you expect as a side effect of uh, non invasive ventilation so over distension risk of air leak and nasal trauma and so on uh, obviously feed intolerance can be a little more and we discussed keeping the tube open between feeds and uh, uh, over distension you have to monitor by monitoring the chest inflation if there is recession it means more pressure if there is no recession and the oxygen is reasonable start weaning that is the way you will know whether you need that pressure or not so don't hesitate <coughs> don't make plans that you will wean tomorrow tell the nurse if the breathing is comfortable start weaning that's what we do in practice so uh, i don't wait for rounds to wean the pressure okay if the nurse notices drop by 0.5 uh, some ventilators like dragger you can drop by 0.5 in other ventilators you'll drop one so try dropping if it's tolerated leave it at that and after a few hours try dropping again and if baby looks very comfortable you don't need to necessarily go from cpap to high flow that's again a practice creep because when we didn't have high flow we took the babies directly off cpap but recently we have started going from cpap to high flow and then they stay two or three days on high flow before we remove that's not necessary if you feel baby is comfortable a trial on direct room air maybe you can as the baby prone for a few hours after that you don't need to hold feeds but don't give oral feeds during that period when they are stabilizing because any baby with a lung disease which is improving it's not an abrupt improvement it's a gradual process of lung improving and healing and normalizing so don't stress the lungs in during this time suck feeds can be given once a baby is stable of non invasive ventilation for a few hours and i personally don't give suck feeds when they are on non invasive ventilation because you may lose more than you gain because if they aspirate you are going to get more time on non invasive ventilation or even worse and further but most of these babies if they are mature enough once you remove when the lung is better they start sucking quickly it's not going to take time it's not that they are extreme premature baby who need to train to suck feed